So I'd encourage you, even at this point, you know, early on, if, if you could, just back up for a, a few minutes and think about if this is really the composition you want. Are you working life-size or close to it? Are you fitting the things that you thought you would fit when you sat down to paint? Did you think about what you would want to fit on your painting? This is the time to change things. This is the time to get the proportions right, not after you put a bunch of paint on your canvas. As you're sketching, you can also make note of major folds in the fabric or big shapes of lights and darks in the fabric. Try to do it with straight lines rather than curved lines. So we're really just drawing right now. We're not color mixing, we're not doing anything else. You're just stepping back and making sure you have an accurate drawing. So here's sort of a sample, a sample of this project sort of in previous classes. So you can see sort of our end goal. Um, the idea is having three apples, a white object, and a green wine bottle, which none of us have. Uh, I thought there were some in here and they're all gone, so uh, the, they must not have made it through the big studio clean out. Um, in any case, uh, for each of the different colors of objects, we have some different problems and things to deal with. So, uh, and the biggest color we're dealing with really is purple, right? We've got this big drapery in the background, um, and then the three apples, which we're going to be dealing with the reds. Um, the reds that you have are alizarin crimson, cadmium red, what? Yeah, I mean, there's, well, there's the, uh, I don't think you have this one. I think you have the cad red light. And alizarin crimson, uh, but you're not just going to squeeze red out of the tube, right? We've got to do more than that. So, um, taking a look at those red apples, what we're going to be doing with each of the objects is mixing up basically a light side and a dark side for each of those forms, right? So, will there be more color than just that? Yes, but for a start, I want you to have basically a light version of the purple and a dark version of the purple, the apples, the white object, and in this case it's a blue glass, on the other side it's a green um, ball of yarn, and there's also a red bottle, but I think that's going to take on similar colors maybe to the apples, I can't remember off the top of my head. So, um, so for the purple, um, you're going to have I guess the most obvious would be your red and blue. So the cadmium red light, you guys want to stand up or at least get a little closer. Um, it might be helpful to you. Uh, and the, the ultramarine blue, is that what you guys have? Okay. Yeah, the cadmium red. Yeah, so, um, you know, mixing those two together, is that going to give you an adequate purple? Marie is going to have to narrate this. What do you think? What did you just say, Marie? I don't see, I didn't say anything. I just said, hmm, mm. it's not purple. But she wasn't impressed by yeah. my purple. I just have too much, blue. I don't have, I have too much red. And yeah. you said I might need to add white. Yeah, because it gets very dark. Yeah, it's extremely yeah. dark. So, um, scooping a little white so we can see what's going on. I start to see some purple now. Isn't it crazy? It goes wow. from that, like, yucky, Brown to yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. It's funny how you really need the white to see the color. So I may have overdone it on the white now, but we've got a couple of 
yeah, it's not too far off, right? Um, we've got some different uh, purples in there, right? Like there's some lighter and darker, there's warmer and cooler, so it's not going to be settled when we make one color we like. But I think if, if you can see that color anywhere up there, you're probably um, off to a good start. So here's the purple I'm getting. I don't know how well you guys can see that, um, but when I look up, what did you say? It's like the lighter part of the purple. Right, it yeah. feels like the lighter purple. Um, that purple could even be a hair brighter, but I think we're in a good place with it. And what I would do is actually put a little on the canvas where I think I see it. And of course it's gonna feel darker right now because we're working on a white canvas, right? So there, you really have to have a sense of urgency about kind of filling those large areas of white with what they really are, or it's gonna throw off your other results. Um, so I've got that for my light. I'm gonna assume I have warm lights. So I'm gonna go for a cooler, um, darker purple for that other shade, right? Because we're only looking for two shades currently. We only want to get a light and a dark. So um, I'm just going to add more blue to start. I scooped a little of the this purple with the white in it away. And you know there's a careful balance that you've got to have between making sure you've got the right color and making sure you've got the right amount. So you don't want to mix a ton of the wrong color where you have to throw that out. I see some people smiling like they might have <laughs> done that once before. Um, but you also don't want to get the right color and then either not remember how you got it or have to make it. Yeah. So uh, I think I see, you know, some palettes as I walk around that look like, um, you know, someone could maybe find their way back to a color. And then I see other palettes as I walk around that look like you got lost and you're never going to find your way back. Right. So I think there is definitely some virtue in keeping track of kind of where you are on your palette. Uh, and there's different ways to lay it out. The bigger the palette, the better. But I would try some kind of system, like all my purples are gonna be over here, or all my lights are gonna be here, and my darks are gonna be here. You know, some, some strategy might not be what you do the rest of your life, but try something that makes sense to you. It's possible it will get even darker. Yeah. You know, there's areas, and let me put the let me put some of this because on this palette they look pretty close, yeah. and they both look on the light side. They don't look terribly different when you put them next to each other, um, but you're going to have areas that are going to get um, less saturated. So you see how this is a brighter purple and a duller purple. There's some reflected light, but also probably some reflected color neutralizing that. Um, you might have areas where you see some blue, or um, areas where the purple is reflecting off the purple, so it's actually going to get a little brighter in the shadow area in that reflected light. So there's all kinds of things happening. We cannot deal with any of that until we've dealt with the, the basic filling in of the painting. So um, for now, try to just keep your mind on a warm light and a cool dark, wherever that seems appropriate. Um, no, I did it again. I started without any paper towels. Do we just do it for the, the, uh, the cloth? Okay. Um, what did you say? Do we just do the warm lights and the um, darks for just the cloth or just all the we're gonna We're going to do it for everything. Okay. So, and I want to show you one other way to mix the purple because I, um, I hate when the whole semester goes by and I don't get to do this. Uh, you might have seen it if, did you guys watch the Gamblin color video? Did I have you watch that one? Gamblin Paint Company? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I prefer to be Yeah, yeah. But for this class. Did I have you done? I don't know. I think I saw something twice. Yeah, I saw okay. something twice okay. in one of the same things. So okay, okay. Um, so another... Um, way that I've mixed, actually I think the way I mixed the purple for this cloth was with Viridian Green and Alizarin Crimson. So that's a, a proper green if you can't see it. Um, 
Marie could vouch for me, but it's like the green on her shirt. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> and, um, and then the alizarin crimson is a darker, cooler red. And um, sometimes I find, you know, depending on, it's a different purple fabric every semester. So I never know quite, you know, if it's going to be a little more muted or a little brighter. But uh, this red and blue only gave a certain access to color space. You know, it was, they give me a certain purple. It's not going to give me all the purples. Um, we can't see it now. I see it. Oh, you see it? All right, let's put some white in it. I might have put too much white in it. Yeah, let's do a little more color. Yeah, it's going to give you, if I can get enough green in there. It's going to give you maybe a little more um, earthy purple. Now that's a lot of white in there. Uh, maybe if I got away from the white a little bit more, it would be different. But, um, you know, it's another purple that I can see in some of those areas. I mean, it's not too far off from that. And when I look at some of the more muted purples, that feels about right. So, you know, there are gonna be, there's gonna be more than one set of colors that can go into making um, your purples. Then, uh, so we've got the light and the dark, and the, um, the darker was also cooler because I added more blue to it, not because I added more black to it. Um, I don't have black. I didn't pull it out of the cabinet. I don't think I would plan to use black today um, at all. So how would you make black? Like if you see, if you see it up there, how would you make it? It's so dark. I mean, well, that's true. So if you were to add blue and orange together, or if you were to add, um, yeah, yeah, if you added the alizarin crimson and the viridian green together, before I added white to it, it was more or less black. So you know, the, when the color gets dark enough, there's really not perceivable color in it. So the darkest thing I see is that blue like the base of the blue um, jug feels truly black to me. I don't know what it is. Um, my mom gave it to me. I guess I could read the label. It says... I've seen that before. I don't know what it is. Um, in any case, that deep dark color, I would think you would get your darkest blue and probably put a little bit of orange with it or a little bit of the alizarin with it to just make it so dark that you can't see what the color is. But what you want is not to use black. You want to use a color that when you go to brighten it up, it's the right color blue, if that makes sense. So, okay, so let's look at the apples next. Um, I feel like this probably feels really obvious, like, okay, the apples are red. Um, but depending on the apple that you get up there, I think the dark side of the apple gets a little more complex. I think the white side of the apple, some of the brighter ones might feel like they're just that straight out of the tube red, but when you actually put it up there, I think it's more of a red, um, a darker, cooler red than just that cadmium red light. So I'm mixing the alizarin and the cadmium red light together to make something that's a little more, I mean, it's pretty brilliant and, and there are some bright areas up there. Uh, I think you should always be a little hesitant to do anything that's straight out of the tube. So I think at least we got not straight out of the tube. I think if you, if you put that color up there and it still felt a little unnatural, I might try mixing in um, something that could be the complement. So, complement of red is often like a green or blue so I'd probably start with one of those um, so a little bit of green mixed into this red I think it just 
neutralizes it the tiniest bit, but maybe gives us a little more real color. I don't know how well you can see that from there. Um, let's forget about the highlights. Anything that's a highlight, let's just totally ignore it. Do not put it in. We'll do that later. Um, the, there's another type of apple in there. There's two kinds of apples. And the other one I can see a little more light in it, you know, like it's starting to get yellow. Yeah, that's the real one. The other ones are the dollar store apples. No, they're not real. And, the, and that's the one that came out of my refrigerator. So, um, so a little bit of that uh, yellow ochre. Do we have yellow ochre? So a little bit of that yellow ochre um, may not do the trick. It may be a lot of the yellow ochre before you get there. And if you get to the point where you feel like you're just making orange, that's again where I think we need to really keep in our mind that um, the color may need to be neutralized. It may not be a matter of going back and forth between red and yellow. It may actually be that it needs to to neutralize and be toned down a little bit before it's gonna look realistic. So this is kind of the color I'm getting. It feels dark. Yeah, it feels dark. Now it's against a white, it's against a white background, but I do think probably lightening it up a little bit. And I'm using a little of the light purple. Because I, I know it's, white or I would use the, it depends on if it was too orange. If it was too orange, I probably wouldn't be afraid to use the light purple because that, you know, all those colors are out there. They're all out there swirling around, reflecting off of each other. So I think it would probably be realistic to say there's a little bit of purple in it. And I actually do think that looks more like um, that color. So getting into the dark sides of the red, how are we going to darken that and cool it off? I think the first attempt I would make would be to just add my darkest, reddest color, right? So I could use a little of the what I've already got, or remember my recipe was just cadmium red and um, alizarin crimson. But again, I think if I just use those two colors, I'm going to have this uh, kind of unrealistic red. really bright. Looks like horror movie red. You see the blood? Yeah. So, and I mean, I see that up in the apples. You know, there is this really, but it's so bright. I mean, what I actually think I'm seeing on those apples is, you know, a cool shadow, some purple reflecting off of them. So I think, again, I'm gonna go for some blue to cool it off and some green to neutralize it because whenever um, things get darker, we also just see less of them. So um, let's try that because it still looks very red to me on here. But especially in those core shadows, do, you, do we know what a core shadow is? That area where the light side changes to the dark side, but actually right where those two meet up on the shadow side, there's that darkest core shadow that runs do through the apple. Sometimes I get confused when I'm doing stuff and I forget the core shadow, so sometimes I just take the light and dark and blend it, but then it gets oh, muddy. Oh, yeah, and that's the opposite of doing core shadow, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like blending yeah, so it, it up So like it. I think um, when you're putting in the shadow, if you pick one value, like say I picked this, that was my dark, and I painted the whole thing that dark red, well then I would be able to go back in with a darker core shadow later. Because the way I would think of it is with each object, you have um, the light side and the dark side, but you really have six types of light? What are they? What are the six types of light that hit an object? Name one first. <laughs> I can't remember. Light side. Light side. Oh, light side. Uh, shadow, shadow side. It was like a, um, I can't hear anything with the fans. So you have to yell it. I just said core shadow. I said, core shadow. I said let's leave out highlights. the highlights. highlights. Reflected light. lights are also part of the shadow. Light and highlights. 
and the cast shadow. So the cast shadow doesn't happen on the object, and it's also the darkest of all the parts that you're going to see. So I've got four shadows I'm dealing with. So I don't want to deal with four shadows when I first start painting. So I'm blocking everything in as basically the shadow side or the cast shadow is going to be a different. It's going to be purple or it's going to be whatever color it's landing on. Um, so I want to have that one value first and then I can go in and for the reflected light, I'll, I'll paint into that color with whatever color is reflecting on, back onto it. I think it's best to let it sit. It's I think it's it ideal to, to land it on there. And the core shadow is the same way, you know, that you're going to add that in um, once you've got the light and dark side. And I think what you should be asking yourself all day today, every time you back up, every time you mix a new color, is do I still have the light side and dark side? Because if you don't have these two, these six are completely irrelevant. It's just going to look like your painting like got chopped up and blew up and then it all scattered and fell back down again. So yeah, if you don't keep it under control with that, that hierarchy of light side, dark side, none of the other things matter. And if you start adding in those things and the painting starts to fall apart, just get rid of them. Just go back to only light side and dark side. So those are the, that's the apples more or less. Um, the blue in here, I know not everybody has to deal with it, uh, so maybe I'll, well, we'll still talk about it, because we've got to talk about the green on the other side too, right? So do we have cerulean blue? Oh yeah, cerulean blue? Yeah. yeah, there's a green in the yarn on the other side. So cerulean blue, let me see if it's still, Tina asked me to record this. I should have been recording all our classes, but I haven't. I've either wound up without the charger or the stand or something every single class. Um, I'm going to squeeze out my cooler, or sorry, my warmer blue, which is the ultramarine blue. And I actually have another blue in here floating around. This is the really cool blue, the turquoise blue. Do you guys see the difference in these three? They're kind of going light to dark, but they're also going cool to warm. Do you feel like you can see all three of those blues in there? Yeah. I think I can. I think in the deep darks, I see the, the warm blue, uh, which we're, we keep saying cool shadows, right? But I'm just, that's what I'm seeing. And blue is a cool color. Uh, in the, the majority of the bottle, if I just am giving it kind of a local color or local tone, I'm seeing that middle blue, that cerulean blue, or if anybody bought manganese blue by accident, that's about the same thing. Uh, and then there's some areas where I feel like I'm seeing the purple fabric or maybe a white object reflecting off of the blue, and that's where I'm seeing some of that turquoise um, blue. So. Glass is kind of a funny thing, right? It doesn't give you a light and dark side the way uh, these other opaque objects will. So whenever we go to paint this one, um, we're probably going to have to handle it a little more abstractly or think of it a little more abstractly. Um, maybe putting in the color that we think we're seeing and then squinting and really observing the shapes of light and dark. So. Yeah, you know, I've got to darken light for this, but it's probably going to be a little more a matter of, um, you know, looking at this in terms of just the blobs of light and dark instead of the, the light and dark side. And it really won't be until we add those highlights at the very end that this um, makes sense. And then the white objects. So you guys have been painting white objects long enough. Maybe I won't talk about that, or should I? I feel like all we've done is white objects for two weeks and two homework. So I'm gonna let you guys handle the white objects. The green over there, um, I just wanna say that the viridian green, I think is where you're gonna wanna start, but you'll probably use a yellow ochre to lighten and warm it up. And you'll probably use maybe the alizarin crimson and or the ultramarine blue to cool it off. You also have your burnt umber, right? It's like a brown. So 
So the burnt umber can be handy, but don't just try to make it be black. You know, it can be helpful if you if you understand that you have something that's on the warm side that also needs to darken, but it's not just gonna work as black all the time. Okay, so I talked about mixing a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and block in some of these colors, but I want you to go, go mix. And then when I've blocked these in, I might call you over one more time just to check in and see how they actually turned out. Um, before, you know, moving on to the next so this is a color? Just go ahead and mix your colors. Don't put it on the canvas yet? I mean, I'm not trying to stop you from putting it on your canvas, but I would say I think it will take you a little time to, I do want you to mix these colors okay. before. I don't want you to just mix one, put it on, mix okay. the next one. Okay. Yeah. 